Lord. The Lord's good, isn't he? All the time. All the time, the Lord is good. Amen. It's something to be excited about, you know, uh, to be saved. It's something to be excited about to be saved. And if you're not excited about being saved, you need to go back in the Word and find out why. Amen. Amen. Find out why you're not excited in the Word. Uh, I just want to uh, open up in prayer, and then we'll get into the Word. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you, and we praise you tonight, Lord. We praise you for who you are, Lord. We welcome your Holy Spirit, Lord, and we ask, Lord, you will have your way tonight, Lord. I ask you to anoint me, Lord, in Jesus' name. Anoint me, Lord. Anoint the congregation, Lord, that we may receive of you tonight, Lord, in Jesus' name. You said in your word, Lord, that everyone is welcome at your table, Lord, and we thank you and we praise you. For we know, Lord, in Jesus' name, you will minister to each and every one of our hearts, Lord. We ask we will open up our hearts to you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Feed us your word tonight, Lord, in Jesus' name. We give you glory. We give you honor. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Lord. He's worthy, isn't he? Thank you, Lord. Uh, tonight, I want to share uh, a little bit of some past uh, uh, messages that the Lord has given me. Uh, it's kind of probably be a review for some, especially the men who is the life builders. They may hear this again. It may be a little bit review to them. And to some who haven't heard it, it would be good news. Amen? His word is always good news. Uh, we were praying on a Saturday, uh, the pastor, myself, uh, Brother John, and uh, Joe Bos Bos Bosco. Joe Bosco. And he came in, and I think he lives in Florida, Pastor, right? He lives in, he's not, I think he's not from around here or whatever. I mean, living here anyway, but he's from around here. And uh, at the end of our prayer, I heard him say that he, he, he lives down in Florida, and he works on the Cuban side of Tampa Bay, Cubans. And he said, we have to get the word out. We have to get the word out. See? That's why, John, Brother John, you go down to Cuba. You don't go down to Cuba to talk about John. And Brother Joe down there don't talk about Brother Joe. And then I heard the pastor talk this morning and say about how the Holy Spirit should be dwelling in our lives, that when we talk and tell people about the Lord, it should be about the, the Holy Spirit leading us. And so that's just something I want to talk to you about, about one message that the Lord had gave him, given me, and it was, it was these words here. Receive it, live it, and give it. You say that again. Receive it, live it, and give it. Let's think about that. Receive it, live it, and give it. When we receive it, if there is not a transformation in our lives from flesh to spirit, we can't live it. Let me say that again. You cannot live the word of God unless you receive the word. And it goes back to the scripture when he talked to Nicodemus and he told Nicodemus that you have to be born again. And so whenever the part that we talked about receiving it, whenever you receive it, that means now you've received the Holy Spirit in your life. You are born again. That's receiving it. And hopefully everyone here has did that part. You've received the Holy Spirit. You've received the Word of God. Amen? Hopefully we all have done that. Because if you haven't done it, you are not saved. You cannot see the kingdom of heaven. So you have to do that part. So... That part is to receive it. The other thing is to live it. So after you've received it, now you have to live. You have to live the word. Amen? You can't just receive it and go about your own way, go about worldly things. You have to do and walk in God. 
And that scripture that we talked about is when you receive the word, it says that in, in that same uh, uh, chapter, it says, those who are born of the flesh are of what? The flesh. But those who are born of the spirit is of the spirit. Amen? So hopefully we're of the spirit. When we live it, it says in Galatians 5.25, if we live in the spirit, we should also what? Walk in the spirit. So if we live in the spirit, we should walk in the spirit. That means now that we should be walking in the things of the Holy Spirit. We should be not walking in the things of the world. If we, before we got saved, we went to some places that was not of God, that was not holy, was not preaching the word of God and exalting God, Jesus himself, we shouldn't go back there. We shouldn't walk in those directions or those paths. Amen? We should walk in the spirit. Not walk after the flesh, but walk after the spirit of God. Amen? Walk after the spirit. Third thing, give it. Give it. Turn to John 17, 8. I'll just read that real quick. John 17, 8. That's what I want to focus on. We're here. John 17, 8. To give it. Once we receive it, once we live in it, now we can what? Give it. Now we can give it. You can't give nothing you haven't received. You can't give nothing you don't have. So we received it. We're living it. And now we want to give it. In 17, this is the prayer when he was praying to his father. Jesus himself. And it said this in 8. For I have given unto them what? The words which thou hast given me. And they received them and have known surely that I came from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. Let me tell you, Jesus, now he's talking about his disciples, and he's talking to his father. Father, whatever you told me to give them, I gave them. And they have received it. Now, some folks that you are going to give it to will not be like the disciples. They won't receive it. Some won't receive it. Some will receive it. But that doesn't stop you from giving it. That's the commission that we should give the word of God. What we receive from God, we should give it. Amen? Amen. Okay. Now, the other message. The pastor mentioned. In John the Baptist, and we, we sung a song. John the Baptist was very bold. We sung that song about being bold, going out and telling folks. John the Baptist, what was his message? Repent. Repent. That was his message, to repent. The kingdom of God is at hand. And John was very bold. John laid down his life, amen, to give that message. And we, and I want to tell you this here now too, but this part here is very crucial. It's all crucial, and it all has to go in an order. You got to receive it, you got to live it, and then you got to give it. Somebody gave you the word of God. Somebody gave it to you. Amen. Didn't somebody give it to you? And they gave it to you, guess what? Before you even received it, they gave it to you. And then when they gave it to you, then you received of the Holy Spirit. Then you were born again. So now it's a continuation thing here. That once you received it, once you live it, folks are waiting for you to give it to them. So we have to give it to them. And what are we giving? We're giving the word of God. We're giving Galatians 5.22, the fruits of the Spirit. That's what we're giving them. We're giving them the fruits of the Spirit. We're giving them encouragement. We're giving them the word of God where it says, you seek me first, the kingdom of God, and everything else will be added unto you. We're giving them the word of God. And when you give them the word of God, you are giving them life. Because he said that my word is what? Life. My word is life. We're giving life. 
If you keep your mouth shut, if you don't say anything, you're holding back some things of God. You could be holding back life to somebody. So that's the commission that we're supposed to tell. And it doesn't matter, like the pastor said this morning, it doesn't matter who it is. It doesn't matter who it is, whoever. Everybody needs God. Everyone needs to be saved. That is his will, that no one perish, but all come to the understanding of the word of God. Amen? So when we, we, we give it, we're given life. We're given healing. We're given encouragement. We're letting people know that greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. It doesn't matter how bad things are. God is in control. Amen? So that's what John, and, and John kept saying this. He says, repent. But he also said this. He also said this, that he, Jesus, must increase and I must decrease. So that means now there's a transformation going on. That's what's happening. John now and ourselves are being transferred into God's people, into God himself, his spirit. Amen? I, wonder about, I said that, all of that, to get to a point. Because you can't, rec you can't receive it, you can't live it, and you can't give it. And you cannot decrease and him increase unless you have one thing. There's one thing key to all of that. And if you don't have it, all of this is nullified. And that's the spirit of God. If you don't have the spirit of God in you, you cannot do these things. And these things won't happen. They won't happen. There will be no increase and you decrease. It will be all about you. It will be all about you. It won't be about Jesus Christ. It will be about you. And I want Jesus to be in my business. I want him to be in my life. I want him to take control. I don't want to hide. And the thing about it is not only do I don't want to hide because I can't hide. There's nothing you can hide from Jesus Christ. You can't hide anything. So you might as well put everything out on the table and confess. He says confession is good for the what? It's good for the soul. So confess to him. Open up your heart to him so that he can come in and dwell in. And I said that because of we must have the Holy Spirit. You have to have the, anything that we do that is not and led by the Holy Spirit is not of God. It's, it, it's, it's simple. It's just not of God. It has to be led and done by the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. So I want to talk a little bit about the Holy Spirit and then we'll be done. So those of you who heard about receive it, live it, and give it, and heard about that he must increase and I must decrease, here's the other part of it. Here is the other part of it. Probably the most important part. Amen? The most important part. You have your Bibles. Let's turn to John 14. John 14. Thank you, Lord. John 14. And here's what we're going to call this. The promise of the Holy Spirit. Let me set up, uh, let, let, let's just review about where we stand here and where the scripture stands, what it's talking about. He is about ready to leave, to go to be with his father. And these scriptures, these scriptures we're about ready to read. And he's getting with his disciples. And he's telling them, and I'm leaving. I'm going to be leaving you. But I'm not going to leave you alone. Now check this out here now. When we read the scripture, let's, let's read the scripture first. Let's read it first. Twenty-five, twenty-six, fourteen. it reads, These things I have spoken unto you, being yet present with you. He's with them now. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, 
whom the Father will send in my name, he shall do what? There's two things. He shall what? Teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Now, he says he's going to leave, but he's going to leave a comforter. Check this out. If, if, at, at death, at death, when somebody dies and they're on a deathbed, you know, some of the, uh, a thing that, 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 that they want to do is make sure that whoever is left behind is being comforted. Check this out. A lot of folks worry about who is being left behind, whether it be their family, friends, or whatever. Uh, they're concerned about who's left behind. A lot of times they're not concerned about them. But is it going to be all right with my wife or my children or my friends? Is it going to be okay? And that's what the Lord was assuring and comforting these disciples about. That's what he was saying. But I'm going to leave you somebody that's going to be with you. And we're going to talk about these things here because these things are so powerful. They're powerful. See, only God can do this. Only, only God can, like, comfort like this and just leave a spirit, leave his spirit behind to conquer and defeat the enemy in any way he tries to come at his people, to preserve his people for his kingdom. Only God can do that and not be present. You see, he was with them now. He was with them. But he's not going to be with them. And he left the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Do you realize how powerful the Holy Spirit is? Let's just think about that. Two things he said. He shall teach you all things. Let me tell you something here about teaching all things. You know how, it easy, how easy it is to not know something and go in a direction and be lost, just to be lost and not know. You know, one of the most powerful things in this world now is knowledge, is knowledge, the know-how to do something. And he says, I'll teach you all things. And the things that he's going to teach us is not things of one plus one and two plus two. That's not what he's going to teach. What he's going to teach is us to have a victory in him. Victory in this world. How for us to preserve ourselves for his kingdom, to be with him one day. So that we don't get swallowed up by the enemy and overtaken by Satan and his principalities and those demons or whatever. Those are the things that he's going to teach us how to get through. Amen. Those are the things. Those are important things. You walk around here and you got people trying to, check this out, trying to deceive you. Trying to take advantage of you. But he says, I'll teach you to watch out for those things and how to be successful. No matter where you are in life, he'll teach us. Amen? He'll teach us. The other thing is, he says, and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Listen to this. Do you know how easy it is to forget about things in the world, like things about like in, in, when you learned in college, in high school, you know, or, or things that somebody has said to you, how easy it is to forget? But check this out here now. If you know the word of God, right, and you know what God's word is, you know, I tell you when I'm the most intelligent, the most smartest. You know when it is? When we're talking about God, I can talk about God to, 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 to PhDs, to high government. It don't matter. Oh, yeah. You could talk about God because you know, because he taught you. Then he says, I'll teach you. 
right? And then he says, I'll bring things back to remembrance in case you forget about what I have told you. Not so much I'm going to bring back memory to things that you learned in the world, but I'm going to tell you and remind you of the things that I said in the word of God that's going to preserve your life to be with me someday. That's what he said. That's how powerful that word is. Amen. So why would he go and he teaches? And then we may forget. And then he don't want to make sure that we remember. Because remember what his words are. His words are life. Right? His words is life. So why would he just want us to forget about what he has taught us about the word of God? He don't. So that's what the Holy Spirit's about. That's what he's about. And that's what we have to have in us. And that's what's in us, that we can overcome the world. That we can go ahead and live in victory. That regardless of what state that we find ourselves in, amen, that we will be preserved for his kingdom. That we could do his will. That we could stand up to people and let them know, hey, you know what? I'm a child of God. You know, regardless of what you might say about me or think about me, I'm not going to let you define who I am. There's only one person who's going to define me who I am, and that's God, Jesus Christ himself. He's going to define whether I'm righteous or unrighteous. I'll go with him, not you, not the world. This thing of low self-esteem, forget about that low self-esteem stuff. I got the greater one living in me. You have the greater one living in you. Forget about that stuff. Nobody's going to define me anymore. They could define me, but I ain't listening. And I'm not listening. You know, you know, enough of that. Enough of that. We're children of God. In all power and glory, if Jesus have all power and glory, so do we. So do we. Because remember, this Holy Spirit, when John says that he must increase and me decrease, that means now I'm being transferred over to Jesus Christ himself, that Spirit of God that he left behind to his disciples. Amen. That's what we have. That's what we have. We're not taking back seat to, oh, you're this, you're that. No, you know who I am? I'll tell you who I am. I'm a child of God. That's who I am. Child of God and heaven bound. And heaven bound. And you know what? You live it. And you give it in front of your children, in front of your co-workers, in front of whoever. Pastor mentioned this morning, we should be living. When they see us, they should see Christ. That's who they should see. Amen? They shouldn't see nobody else. Jesus Christ. There was men that went before us. that put themselves before themselves. I don't want to go into that, but there were some examples I gave, though. But they put themselves last, second to the word of God. Not first. Anybody put themselves before the word of God, they're preaching or teaching and them, all they're talking about is themselves, look out. Look out. Because it's about him, not about us. It's him. It's him who died on the cross. Amen? It's him. I want to, and, and, and this is the other thing, too. You, you have folks that saved, that say they saved, right? And they're lacking one of these two things. And if you're lacking one of these two things, you, you, you better get both of them together. How can you be saved and you don't have your Bible? How can you be saved? How can you be saved if you don't have the Holy Spirit? So it's hand in hand. It's the word of God, and it's his spirit. Check and make sure you have both of them. Just check and make sure that you got both of them and you're sound. 
Make sure you got both of them. And you're using both of them. And you're yielding to both of them. Amen? So that was the promise. That was the promise of the Holy Spirit. Now we're going to go to the coming. See, the Holy Spirit, that wasn't the coming of the Holy Spirit. That was just the promise. He told them whenever I leave because he was with them. Now the coming of the Holy Spirit. Coming of the Holy Spirit. Turn to John. John 16. John 16. It's one page or so over. Thank you, Lord. He is worthy. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Thank you, Lord. John 16. Okay, we're going to read verses. We're going to, verses 5 through 11. Let's just read that. John 16, 5 through 11. Here we go. Everybody there. Here we go. But now, this is the coming of the Holy Spirit. But now I go my way to him that sent me. And none of you asks me, where that thou goest? But because I have said these things unto you, sorrow fills your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go away, not away, what's that? The comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, and I will send him unto you, and when he is come, here's these things he will do. He will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they believe me not. Of righteousness because I go to my father and ye see me no more. And of judgment because the prince of this world is what? It's judge. Check this out. He's telling them, I have to go. I got to go. Because if I don't go, you will not receive the Holy Spirit. So he left. Praise the Lord that he left. You know, because by him leaving, when he left here, what did he do when he left? His exit was the cross. That was his exit. His exit was to die on the cross for our sins. That we may have eternal life. That we may be redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. By his stripes we are what? Healed. There were so many things that happened on that cross. So he had to go. And he told him, I'm going. But then he told him, I'm not going to leave you comfortless. Everything is going to be okay. Everything's going to be all right. That's the coming of the Holy Spirit. That's, how the Holy, that's why the Holy Spirit is here right now. Because of what he did on the cross. Because he left them. He says, yeah, you're going to be sad. Check this out. That's what I'm saying about, you know, about death. Death is sad to a degree. To a degree. But Pastor, what you say about death this morning? We all have a, a, a what kind of time? A point in time. And that was his appointed time. But he left his, his Holy Spirit, though. He left his Holy Spirit. Amen? I just want to read a few things about these things, what that Holy Spirit did, and then we're done. Amen? One thing. He knew that sorrow filled their heart, and they were going to be troubled. He knew that. But with the comfort, the comforter, the comfort and counsel in the Greek, it means helper. So he knew that they would need help. Who don't need help here? Who don't need help? We all need help, every one of us. In some kind of way, we need help. Amen? And, okay, this is, this is a question I want to ask you. Here we go. What impact will the Holy Spirit have on the world? What impact will the Holy Spirit have on the Christians? What impact? Let me read this to you. 
through the Holy Spirit, Christians who were the Holy Spirit in drills, he will give power and will lead them by the Holy Spirit to do the will of God. That's the impact of the Holy Spirit. It's going to empower us. That means that we can overcome. It's going to lead us in the right direction that we should go. And the things that we do will be doing for the will of God, not ourselves. So that's what the Holy Spirit does when it's within you. Amen? As far as this righteousness go, right? And he says, I'm going to be with the Father, right? Who, who can get up into heaven that's unrighteous? You can't do it. You can't do it. So when he told them that I'm going up there to be with my father, they knew then that he was righteous. They knew. If there was a doubt after that, they knew when he went to be with his father. Amen? They knew that. So he was righteous. Then one other thing. One last thing here. What did Jesus mean by convicting the world of sin? Because they do not believe in me. Listen. If you tell people this, if you tell someone this, they would think that, you know what, you know, you think you're better than I am. You tell them this here. You, you think you're better than I am. Well, who are you to tell me? Based on the scripture here, it says, if you do not believe in Jesus Christ, you are in what? Sin. See, I didn't know that. When, before I got saved, I didn't know that. I'm telling you, I, I, I didn't know. I just thought that, you know what, I'm going to church, and I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. I do believe in that, but I didn't live it. I didn't live that way. I thought about it, but I didn't live that way. Oh, yeah, you're God, you know, but I'm not going to live like that, though. But I know you're God, though, but I'm not going to live like that. He is saying you should know that he is Lord, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and we should live like he wants us to live. Because if you believe in something, you'll do it, right? You'll do it. If you don't believe in it, you won't do it. You won't do it. So, tonight, I want to leave you with being encouraged about whatever part of your life is, whatever you do, be led by the Holy Spirit. If you don't have the Holy Spirit dwelling in you, you are not saved. You have to have the Holy Spirit in you. And tonight we learn how powerful the Holy Spirit really is. Very powerful. Very powerful. And that was just a little bit touching basis a little bit on the Holy Spirit. There's so much more to the Holy Spirit. But that's the beginning. The coming of the Holy Spirit. The promise of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a hand.